So, Chris, uh, how's everything? How's business doing? Well, the business is doing fine, actually. We're, from the Chambers' perspective, we're actually growing strongly. Uh, I think now we're actually uh, at 300 members, which is our highest we've ever had. Uh, we're actually working hard to get UK companies in. Uh, interest remains high. Of course, to be fair to, to UK companies, the whole news is obviously uh, dominated by Brexit. So, and of course, that's very difficult, as explained by the British Chamber of Commerce, for these companies to plan. But notwithstanding, I think there is a lot of interest. Uh, like everything, we can always do more. But I'm very pleased to say that we're at one of our highest membership levels ever. So it only means that the confidence yes, in your group is very high and the opportunities well, so. I think what people are seeing is, we hope, is that A, the British Chamber is extremely active, that we obviously have worked hard in various areas. We worked particularly hard, uh, along with others, uh, obviously, to get the uh, business law passed uh, in terms of the anti-red tape, right? Uh, ease of doing business. And that obviously was a big success, and it's one that we're going to promote and work. Uh, and we've also been involved, obviously, in discussions uh, most recently on the Bill 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 Forum, the one that was televised on CNN Philippines. And I think it's a reflection of the fact that the British Chamber is now being asked for its inputs. And that's really a, a reflection of the ball, the activities, and all our members together. And the work, of course, in conjunction with the British Embassy. Yeah, we are in Q3 now. Uh, what do you see down the road? Well, we've got a, another uh, roadshow coming up, which will be in October. Uh, I'll be in the UK for approximately three weeks at uh, various events. I think we want to uh, end very, very strongly. Um, I think that in regards to business in the UK, we also have to make, obviously, our comments on Brexit in the sense that this is clearly uh, a big impact for UK companies in terms of their planning. But nonetheless, uh, even though obviously the trading relationship with Europe is not yet established, or the future relationship, I should say, I think there's a big opportunity in Asia and, and the Philippines in the case. I also think that if you see in Asia and, and the Philippines in the case, I also think that if you link it to world events, I think also the Philippines uh, has got a good opportunity, uh, particularly based on the fact that government spending will ramp up in the second half of the year, and I think that brings more opportunities. Do you see any uh, effect of the trade war between uh, China and the US? Yeah, I think there, there is definitely an impact. Uh, I think that no one can be completely uh, not insulated from it. Uh, I think in that respect there are supply chains that are linked to it, but I think the Philippines to some degree is possibly less affected, but I think it's fair to say everybody who works in a chamber, whatever chamber, is we believe in obviously increasing trade. So a trade war is, is obviously opposed to what we want to do. We want to see more trade and less regulations and more people trading or less tariffs. So, I think the Philippines is probably going to be affected, but less so than other countries. But I think also a lot will depend, obviously, on the government spending, the bill, bill, bill. But let's not forget the private sector is growing at a pace, uh, and it's really matching that and keeping up our growth rates to 6%. And what, what do you see at the end of the year in uh, H2? Look, I, I honestly believe if, if those projects go ahead, and not, I think when I'm talking about the projects, I think it's a continuing spend, and I think if the private sector remains confident, and obviously there have been moves to make sure the economy moves forward, I think the Philippines will be resilient. Now, of course, we have to be cognizant of world events. I think the whole world would rather see a, a quietening down and a resolution, of course, of the China-US trade wars. Um, and of course, we want to see improvements in economies around the world. But I think the Philippines is well situated. Uh, I do think it's important for us to keep the growth rate up at around 6%, which they're making those efforts and above. And I think inflation obviously has come down, which is a key factor. Yeah. And I think if we can move forward on this, and then if I look forward at some of the programs, if I may say, 
I, am I hopeful that the retail liberalisation law will be passed? I would encourage, obviously, the government to be, hopefully, which I think is beginning to happen, to take some of the concerns on the PESA zone uh, for the CITRA law, which is now the new replacement of the Trabajo. So I, I'm optimistic. I think there's good opportunities for the Philippines. And because of that, I think there's great opportunities for UK companies to do trade and investment in the Philippines.